Hello all and welcome to our 3D Daily Show, a video format brought to you by 3D Natives and powered by Velo3D, leading provider of metal 3D printing solution. I'm Alex Martel, founder of 3D Natives, and I'm here at Formnext, the ultimate trade show in additive manufacturing happening right now in Frankfurt, Germany. In this first episode, focus on new additive manufacturing solution for a digital industry, we are taking you through the aisle of the show to meet with the leading and most innovating hardware companies in this industry. Come with me. To start us off on the right foot, we are taking you to Formlabs. Formlabs started back in 2011 with a Kickstarter campaign which raised almost $3 million. Since then, Formlabs has become one of the leading manufacturer in 3D printing thanks to their resin but also powder bed fusion technologies. So let's go and meet our first guest of the show, Sean from Formlabs. Hello Sean. Hi. How are you doing? So I'm here with Sean David Doyle, Senior Technical Sales Manager at Formlabs. How is it going here at Formnext today? Yeah, really good. I'm excited about the show. It seems like it's going to be pretty busy this year. Okay. Could you tell us more about Formlabs right now? Yeah, so um, Formlabs has been one of the kind of the leading 3D printing manufacturers on the market for the last 10 years. Um, our goal has kind of been to make 3D printing more accessible, affordable and easy to use for as many different industries and applications as possible. Could you tell us more about the two technologies uh, you are working on right now? So yeah, we're focusing mainly on SLS and SLA 3D printing. So these two technologies are great because they produce robust end-use parts. So in my intro, I was talking about different industries you are focusing on. Can you tell us a bit more about this, actually? Yeah, so over the next few years, we're looking to focus on the likes of medical and uh, industrial manufacturing, such as automotive and aerospace. Um, these kind of sectors require extremely high quality from both their machines and their the parts produced, uh, thanks to our kind of wide range of materials, which have all been kind of rigorously tested and certified, uh, we can offer some fantastic solutions to these sectors which were previously untapped uh, by 3D printers. And so I, I can see a really nice part in your hands. What are the, the innovation actually? What, what are you showcasing right now at Formnext? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is actually a part from Deutsche Bahn, um, which required a lot of lightweight, kind of robust qualities from it. Um, previously, this would have been large and made from metal, so they're looking to both reduce cost, material waste, and kind of improve the efficiency uh, of their products. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty fine example of kind of a generatively designed part to solve a very modern uh, engineering problem. And what are the two different technologies you are showcasing here at Formnex, and what are the advantages compared to other technologies? Yeah, so this was actually produced on the Fuse One Plus, which is our SLS machine. It uh, has access to almost six, or six different uh, nylon powders with a range of different additives and fills. Um, we also have a range of different SLS technologies, which you'll see around our booth, or sorry, SLA resin-based printing. Um, yeah, along with over 35 materials in our full product portfolio and materials range. Well, thanks you very much for your time. I know it's going to be a busy day for you. Uh, well, good luck for the rest of the show. Still uh, four days to go. How do you feel? Yeah, excited. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean. Before moving to our next guest, I wanted to come with one figure. According to the latest Waller's report, the additive manufacturing market is still very dynamic with a yearly growth rate of almost 20% in 2021. While this is really something we can acknowledge here at Formnext, with a lot of exhibitors, more than 800 actually, ranging from hardware manufacturer, post-processing solutions, software editors, material suppliers of course, and a huge number of new startups coming into the market. In order to get a better understanding of the combination of hardware and software in additive manufacturing, I'm meeting today with Doug Koenig, Principal Product Manager at Markforge. So Markforge is a US-based uh, manufacturer uh, focusing on metal but also polymer uh, technologies for the industry. Doug, today uh, you are going to tell us a bit more about your new simulation software and how actually uh, inspection, monitoring is driving the future of additive manufacturing. Okay, but first of all, how is it going? First day at Fall Next? It's great. It's been a crazy show already. We launched the software offering yesterday, um, the simulation software offering, and we've already had a ton of users come through. The interest is really high. You can just see behind me at the booth, so we're having a great time over here. Cool. For our audience, can you tell us a bit more about who you are? Yeah, so Mark Forge is a company that is all about bringing production of industry-grade components to the point of need. 
We do that with a combination of software, hardware, and materials to allow users to print extremely stiff and strong parts that can survive in end-use production. What do you view as some of the main barriers for the adoption of additive manufacturing? Yeah, so additive manufacturing really is in a design cycle. And that is collecting requirements, designing a part, then you have to slice the part, prep the part, you print the part, and then you put it into production after inspection. And what we're seeing is the, the hardware and the materials are evolving quickly, but there's still failure points in the design cycle, whereas I might be printing a part and the print fails, or I print the part and it is out of tolerance. And that means that I am increasing the iterations of the print cycle. So what we strive to do is streamline the print cycle as much as we can, and we honestly believe that software can help us do that, as well as our leading machines, as the FX20 behind us over here, and our strong, stiff and strong materials. How is Markforge approach uh, when it comes to software? Uh, so this really comes down to confidence, in my view, right now. And that is, how do we remove the failure points in the design cycle? Whether it be a print fails, whether it be out of tolerance, maybe you put it, the part into production and it fails in production. Right now, users have very low confidence. In the other way that users go about this is they just print the part and then they put it into production and it either works or it doesn't work. And we really don't know, right? So this is all about how do I decrease the time to solution and decrease the number of iterations that I'm going through. So the simulation software does that by allowing users to rapidly iterate in Iger, which is our cloud-based slicing engine. So I, as a user, can get answers in seconds or minutes on if my part is going to perform as I need it to. And then the software can also tell me what is the optimal way to make this. So what should we expect from uh, Mark Forge for the coming years? Um, continued innovation, one, and continued drive into industry grade workflows, streamline innovation. Um, I think later this year, you'll see a lot of interesting new applications come out from Mark Forge. Uh, the simulation technology coupled with our blacksmith technology will just streamline the workflow even more, provide users with more confidence that their part is going to perform, as well as meet dimensional tolerances, and we'll continue driving in that direction in the coming years. So we really want to mitigate the failure points in the design, design cycle for additive manufacturing, leveraging software, and then innovate in our hardware and our materials portfolio as well. Well, it seems your booth is very full right now, so I'm going to leave you and go back to work. Thank you very much, Doug, Absolutely. for your time. You. See you very soon, and good luck for the rest of the show. So now, guys, something a little bit different. On each episode of our 3D Daily Show, we are going to highlight some of the new companies in the field of additive manufacturing, starting right now with Revelin Robotics, one of the winners of this year's for next startup challenge. So Revelin Robotics uh, automates the post-processing of metal AM parts, and we are here today with their CEO, Robert Bush. Hi, Robert. How is it going? Hello, very good. Nice to okay. meet you. So what do you do, guys, exactly? So Rivelin takes a metal AM part from Powder Bay Fusion, Binder Jet, and we remove the supports, remove the platform, finish the part, polish the part, and end up with something like this. Really without, shiny. Yep, shiny, um, an improved surface, without any manual intervention, manual intervention. so improving the repeatability, the reliability, and the scalability. Well, can you actually tell us a bit more about how this works? Yeah, so uh, obviously we're using a robot, um, and we're using a robot to remove supports, finish apart, as simple as that. But some of the key novelties of this technology is A, you don't need a specialist robot programmer. There's no programming, zero programming. You just need somebody to teach a couple of recipes, so applications engineering, someone who knows how to remove supports and finish. And secondly, the novelty is sensors. So this is a binocular stereo structured light camera, and it can scan the component, measure it for surface finish and for dimensions, but also snap 
the part. So it can snap the real part with distortion, with variability to the actual net shape CAD. Where do you see Rivalin Robotics in the next five years, let's say? Yeah, well, so we want to have our robots helping OEMs, tier ones, you know, the supply chain mass adopt Metal AM. That's where, that's where we exist. We want mass adoption of Metal AM. We want to enable completely digital supply chains, digital factories, uh, and we think the last gap is post-processing. Well, thank you very much, Robert, for your time. I'm giving you this back, actually. Well, guys, make sure you pass by Rivelin Robotics uh, at your booth. What is your, the name of the, the number of the booth? Uh, B41, stand B41, hall 12. Okay, so make sure you pass by here and see what they are doing, guys. Well, thank you very much again, Robert. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. Good luck for the rest of the show. See you. Well, guys, this is already the end of our first episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. A big thanks to our special guests from Formlabs, Markforge, Revelin Robotics. Make sure you follow all the news about Formnext on 3dnatives.com and see you tomorrow for a second episode of our 3D Daily Show. <laughs>